Okay, what we have here today is an integral that looks a lot like the gamma function, but there's just one problem. The lower bound on the gamma function, what we would have on this would be, our lower bound would be zero. Typically, if we mess with the bounds or any part of the gamma function, it's gonna make it much more messy, difficult. We might have to like estimate an answer. But in this case here, when our lower bound is one, and then the exponent on the x here, when this is gonna be an integer, a positive integer value, we can actually get a pretty nice formula for this. Initially, I was gonna do this with like x to the 2024 or x cubed or something, but I think actually the general formula is gonna be more interesting. So to get started with it, I'm gonna do kind of the obvious thing and do integration by parts. We'll use the DI method or tabular integration over to the right. I wanna differentiate x to the n because x to the n is eventually going to differentiate down to zero, even though if you have a large n, it's going to take a long time, but it's going in the right direction. So we'll do that, and then we'll integrate this e to the minus x. So let's go ahead and get some terms differentiating here. We're going to have x, sorry, n to the x to the n minus 1, and then we'll do it again. We'll have n times n minus 1, x to the n minus 2. This is going to keep going like this all day long. Eventually, we're going to have We'll do a couple last terms. Eventually we'll get to like n factorial times just x to the one. Differentiate that, you just get n factorial. Differentiate it again, you get zero. Over here, the integrals are easy. It's just gonna be alternating sign because the minus sign in front's gonna pop out. So like the next one's gonna be positive. And then we'll do one more with a negative and this is gonna keep going all the way like this. So a part of our solution on the diagonals, just notice that each one of these is gonna be negative. So what I'll do with this is let's factor out a minus sign. Well, actually, we'll factor out minus e minus x here. And then I just need to copy down all this stuff, and it's all going to be positive, leaving off the zero, of course. We're not going to be integrating the zero, because that's just zero. And what I'm going to do with this, let's actually, I usually copy this down top to bottom. It doesn't matter which order, right? So let's go bottom to top, just because it's going to set this up a little nicer. So we're going to have n factorial plus n factorial times x. Then we'll have a whole bunch of terms, and then we'll have these last three here. And this whole thing's gonna be evaluated from one to infinity. And so now we can just evaluate this. Let me make some space, because we're gonna need it with such a long expression like this. So first, when you evaluate an infinity, you're gonna have the exponential here, it's gonna be more powerful, and then this part, and this part's going to zero. So the first part is just zero. Then for the second part, minus times minus is plus. Then plugging in 1, e to the minus 1, let's just bring that into the denominator. And then this part is why it's nice to have the lower bound as 1, because it's going to simplify everything, right? Because all these x terms just become 1. So what we end up with is n factorial plus n factorial plus a whole bunch of stuff. Then let's see, this is going to become like, for the last three terms, n times n minus 1 plus n. This last one's just going to be a 1. And now we've got some kind of answer here, but it's really how can we simplify this, particularly the numerator, which is kind of a mess right now. What I want to do is rewrite this, but then for the whole numerator, for like n factorial, I can write this as n factorial over 0 factorial, but 0 factorial is just 1. And then for this one, the second one, I can write this as n factorial over 1 factorial, still that's just 1. Then the next one is going to be n factorial over 2 factorial, and then eventually and then eventually getting to these last three terms, I can write still, we want n factorial in the numerator and everything. So I can write this one as n factorial. If we have here n minus two factorial, just notice the way the cancellation's working, it's gonna get back to n times n minus one. Same thing here, I can write this one as n factorial over n minus one factorial. That's gonna just give us an n. And for a one, I can write this as n factorial over n factorial. Well, if you look at this numerator and you think about factoring out n factorial, we could write this here as a sum. We'll use a different variable like k. So if we're going from k equals 0 to n, then this whole thing is just going to be 1 over k factorial. And so in order to get my simplification, the thing to notice here is this is going to be really similar to our power series for just e to the x. With this formula here, all I need to do is just input a 1 right here on the, for the x, right? And then do the same thing over here. One to the k is just gonna be one. And then now we're really similar. 
So between this and this, there's only one difference. It's just that this is going to infinity, this is going to n. This is a lot like what we did in a couple of previous videos where we did an estimation. We used the power series for arctan in order to estimate the value for an integral. We could kind of do the same thing here, but there's a couple of problems. It turns out when n is a small value, like it could be one or two, because we're only saying it needs to be a positive integer. So n technically could be one. And then our estimate's gonna be pretty bad if n's one, two, or three, or anything like that. But the other problem with using e as an estimate and plugging it back in, well, we factored out an n factorial, right? So we're gonna have n factorial. Everything, all this stuff is gonna be an e over e. But then before we get our final solution, we cancel the e's, and then my solution for this is just n factorial. Well, the trouble with this is if we go back to our original integral, and you think about if this was a zero again, this is the gamma function. So if this is the gamma function, this is the same thing as gamma of n plus one. But gamma of n plus one is the same thing as n factorial. So by doing this, all we've done is we've just said that when this is one for the lower bound, it's basically still the gamma function. And yes, that's gonna be true for most n values, but it's also kind of pointless because it's just kind of like looking at it, you can get a pretty good idea that this is a lot like the gamma function. So kind of, I'm just gonna reject this because it's just not really doing much for us. So what I wanna do instead is let's get rid of this and let's actually get rid of this E for now because I really just wanna focus on this numerator in this serious situation. So then what we can do is let's take this right here. Let's take this series right here and just kind of expand it out and look at it side by side with what we actually have here. Okay, so what I've done here is multiplied back in n factorial times the power series we had before of just e to the one. I changed the variable back so everything's in terms of n here. And then just comparing n factorial times e to what we wanna find, our goal right here, this part to the left is identical. Every term here is exactly the same until we get to this point. And actually to make it clear, let me show that this is infinite right here, right? So this is not gonna stop. This is going on forever right here. And so for our expression, we have a pretty good estimate with n factorial e, but the question is, what do we do with all this stuff at the end? Now, the first thing I noticed with that is even the first term is gonna be less than one because of course, n plus one factorial is gonna be greater than n factorial when n's a positive integer. And these terms, they're getting smaller really fast because it's a factorial. If you start messing with the values, you see that this thing over here is gonna become a pretty small number. It's gonna to seem to be like less than one. So the way I wanna do that is just comparing it to a series representation of one. The first thing that comes to mind really is a geometric series where the ratio is one half. So it's basically just this one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth on and on forever. But now I can write this a little bit of a different way for one over four, that's the same thing as one over two squared, but I'm gonna kinda, I wanna try to make it clear. So I'm gonna write it out and write it like one over two times two for two cubed here. I'll write that out as three twos. For two to the fourth, let's write that out. And then let's just compare it to this thing. But when I do it, let's simplify, because you see we have all kinds of cancellation going on here. I can cancel this with, this is like the same, this right here is the same thing as n plus one times n factorial. So the n factorial cancels out. And so this first term is just gonna be one over n plus one. And then next, doing the same kind of thing on this one, just writing it out, I can write this as, n plus two times n plus one. And then on the next one, getting our cancellation, same kind of thing. And let me just rewrite this because it's kind of all out of line, so let me fix this. And then the reason I write it out like this, so we can compare this term by term. The real key to this is we don't know what n is, but we do know it's a positive integer. So if n's a positive integer, I can say that n is greater than or equal to one. But then looking what we have here, we have everything, we at least have an n plus one and everything. So that means that n plus one is gonna be greater than or equal to two. So because we have the same number of terms, like we have one thing here, two things here, three things here, then with that, we know the greatest value this possibly could be is one. So we can say this whole thing right here is less than or equal to one, but that's only if every single term was a two. It's not possible because here we have an n plus two. So n plus two, this needs to be greater than or equal to three. This n plus three needs to be greater than or equal to four. So technically if n equals one, this first term is gonna be equal to one half. But then still every single term after it is gonna be less than the one here with one. So from this, we'll just put that down. We know this is less than one. So then what does that do for us coming back to here, trying to put a value on this thing? 
Well, what I can do for the value of this is we can start with this right here. We know it's pretty close to n factorial times e, but then minus this stuff. But what is all this stuff? Well, it's less than one, but what we can say about it then is this is gonna be just the fractional part of n factorial e, because the fractional part is just a leftover decimal part of a number. Like if you have something, let's just say you have 2.3, and you take the fractional part, it's just gonna be 0 0.3. So all we're doing here is taking our n factorial times e, subtracting off the fractional part, and that's gonna be our answer. But there is still a nicer way to do this because for positive numbers, and we know this is gonna be positive is e's positive and n's positive. So for positive numbers, we can use the definition that this right here, or if you write this as x minus fractional part of x, this is the same thing as the floor function of x. So for this right here, we'll write this as the floor function of n factorial times e. And then just coming back to what we were doing earlier, we still have this e in the denominator, so let me rewrite it. So for the final solution of this, we just have the floor function n factorial e over e, and that's it. Okay, so I thought that was a pretty compact solution. And it's nice when you look at it that you can see, like you can almost, in, you can kind of envision the e's canceling out, especially for large numbers where the fraction part's not really gonna matter. Then if you do that, you cancel out the e's, you get back to the n factorial that we know we would get with the gamma function. And I should probably get rid of this because it's not really true when we have the lower bound one. That was just from the example when we had the bound of zero. And one other quick note on this, by doing this, of course you also can do something else with this. You also know the solution to the same kind of thing, just going from zero to one of this. Because we know that when you add this to this, you're gonna get back the gamma function or n factorial when n is an integer. So knowing this, we know that this integral must be n factorial minus the same thing. Okay, so there you go. Really interesting case with the incomplete gamma function. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.